last week we spoke about Mark chapter 1, verses 21 to 38, as Jesus went to Capernaum. And we, we, we touched on one of the, the, the sayings that I heard. And that saying was, give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Teach a man how to fish. You feed him for a lifetime, but empower a man and how to own the lake. And you feed him for generations. And we touch on the principle of give, teach, and empowerment. And we ask you, the question I ask you, God's children, is what is the level of your expectation? Is it to be given? Is it to teach? Or is it to be empowered? Because the level of our expectation determines our destination. That whatever we expect to go and get to is where we stop and don't go beyond that point. And I told you that when we stop at being given stuff, that we limit what we can receive. And everything we receive only lasts a moment. And when we're open to be taught, we're able to receive things that can last a lifetime. But if we can transition to not only being taught, but being empowered, then you receive things that will last for generations, a.k.a. the Bible says, for eternity. And I ask you to adjust your expectation. Therefore, it can reflect the destination that you want to get to. That God is more interested in people who are willing and ready to be taught so they can be empowered rather than people who's looking just for a handout. And the question is, how can I transition from being taught into being empowered? And we spoke about the fact that when you're open to be taught, not by any and everybody, but by the Word of God, authentically, now your responsibility is to be able to commit and comply. And as you commit and comply, after a while, God will authorize you. Therefore, God will empower you. And we spoke about the principles in the scripture as you read it last week. Now as we transition to this week, God's children, I want to start out by talking a little bit more about power and empowerment. See, power as we're talking about it, is something that everyone desires on some level. It is the very thing that men crave. Bible says that the love of money isn't good for us. That in itself, the love for money is evil. But when men seek after money, when men seek after territory, men seek after position, what they really want is power. The reason why we want to become successful in life is because it gives us a certain level of privilege that converts realistically into power. That I have the power to be able to go to the store and get what I want. I have the power to be able to desire a house and be able to build it and purchase it. I have the power to walk into a dealership and get the car that I want. I have the power to walk into a situation and change the situation to what I want it to be. So man is always having a fear with power, even from the beginning of time. See, Eve did a fall from grace until the devil introduced the possibility of her receiving the power that God has. So it's always been a power struggle. But God didn't want us to stay weak. God wants us to be strong. But God don't want us to get power by just taking power. Because power in itself is this. To assume the right to take control of whatever that may be. That means I assume the right to take control. Not to position myself to get control, but to take control. What Eve did was she took the initiative to take control of the situation by eating the fruit. When God say, we should not eat of the fruit of the tree from knowledge of good and evil. So she wanted to take power when the devil introduced to her, introduced to man, was the possibility of taking power. And what God wanted us to do is to be in a position to be empowered, not take power. I know that it was said that power is not given, it is taken. That is a man's terminology, not biblical principle. Because God doesn't want us to take power. God wants us to position ourselves where we can be taught, become equipped as we comply and commit to the information where now he can empower us. So now empowered 
means to give power or authority to. See, God wants us to get in a position where we're given authority and given the power, not take it. And it's important to realize that, that the fall of man wasn't the greed for money, but what the money can possess. Wasn't the greed for knowledge, but what the knowledge can possess. The fall of Lucifer wasn't just pride, but what Lucifer really wanted when it's all said and done is power that was willing to take it, not wait to be empowered where God can authorize him to get it. See, if Eve went according to God's plan, she would have stepped away from the situation and she want to be empowered and not just take power and go to God and say, God, the stream of knowledge you're going to need with all fruit look good. What can I do to obtain one of those fruit? Because I would like to have it. And as God gives her instructions, as God gave Adam instructions, you will get in the position where God now will give them the opportunity, teach them the information, and as they commit and comply, God cannot authorize them to receive the knowledge of good and evil, and then they will be in a position where they have the authorization to take it and now have the ability to hold it and not destroy themselves. So it's important, God, shows you that when we seek after power, we seek after empowerment, not just power. Because power is not supposed to be taken according to God, but you're supposed to get authorized by Him. That real true power is in submission to the right of authority, not domination. And many of us is taught that true power is the ability to dominate the situation. And that is the problem that God has with us. That was the problem of the first Adam. Is that they took power into their own hands prematurely out of the will of God. Out of the right that they had. They disobeyed out of pride and selfish desires. There's not fall in the same problems. So we don't want to seek after power, but empowerment as it relates to authorization by God. That we submit to God and He will give us the opportunity where He will teach us information that we now can commit and comply to. And by that, we can now be empowered. So God's children, I, I asked you last week, what is your expectation to be given, to be taught, or to be empowered? That is important for us to realize. That we want to set our expectation of being empowered. When we say to God, please give me the ability to seek after empowerment to your authority and nothing else. This way my vision is set. My focus is adjusted. And as I take my steps, I'll provide the steps, God. And you provide the provision. So that we can truly be powerful. Alright, let's take a, a flash forward a little bit. As we talked about in scripture last week about Mark. I jumped over to Matthew about the same experience Christ had in Capernaum. Because Matthew revealed an experience that Mark didn't quite reveal. And it's interesting because it, it really interests me. That how Christ responds to this situation versus the scripture reading of today. So turn with me to Matthew chapter 8, fairly quickly, verses 5 to 13. So now, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home paralyzed and in, in terrible suffering. Jesus said to him, I will go and heal him. The centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. But just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one to go and he goes and that one to come and he comes. I say to my servant, do this and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was astonished and said to those following him, I tell you the truth. I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. I say to you that many will come from the east and from the west and will take their places at the feast with me, with me, with me, 
Let me read that. At the feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, but the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown away, thrown outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go. It will be done just as you believed it would. And his servant was healed at that very hour. So Mark didn't mention that experience. But Matthew did. So I want to flash forward to the scripture reading because Jesus was so teaching the people prior. And then up here now, he came in that an encounter with a centurion. Now, who is a centurion? It's a Roman soldier, not a religious person. Not even an Israelite. A Roman a Roman soldier, almost like a general, that they are over a minimum of a hundred soldiers. So it would be safe to say, why would you heal? Why would you do something for someone who's not part of Judaism? Not part of your people? Not part of Christianity Christ? Not part of the movement that you started? But it shows that Christ came for all people, not just one people. He's willing to help any and everybody if they first be a one in mind to approach him. And then this man asked Jesus for assistance. And it's not that Jesus said no, but Jesus said, I will go. Him knowing who he is, how his house is, and who Christ is, said to Christ, well, I'm not worthy for you to come under my roof. But I am also a man under authority. Remember last week I told you that Christ never referred to himself as powerful. But he referred to himself as authorized. That I have the authority to operate. So he realized the authority that Christ has. And he understood authority. The first thing he said is that I am a man under authority. God's children, are you under authority or are you trying to defy authority? Many of us try to defy authority and try to say, I'm independent and all-powerful by myself because I have freedom. But the truth is, true power is most potent in when it's underneath the right authority. But underneath the authority, he expressed what he's authorized to do. That he said, I have I have soldiers that is under me as I'm under authority. And I told this when, when I tell this one to go, he goes. When I tell this one to come, he comes. So we acknowledge the authority of Christ beyond just men. That you have the authority over the ailments that I'm asking you to heal. That you don't have to come and, provide, and, 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 come and, uh, and act out a ritual. You can just say the word from wherever you are because you have the authority. Many of us are, thought, are taught over and over again that authority means that we're in submission underneath something that holds us restraint. But truth is, where you want to be is underneath the right authority because then you can be empowered to do things that's far greater than what you're capable of by yourself. This is why God told Adam and Eve, don't eat of this fruit. From, don't eat of this fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Because then you take power into your own hands. And power without authorization equals anarchy, confusion, and chaos. But power underneath authority equals order, privilege, power, and right. That means you can operate effectively. Centurion understand that because of the authority I'm on the need, these men are obligated to listen to my instructions. But if I wasn't underneath that authority, then they can do whatever they want. What if one is bigger, stronger, and more skilled? Then that one can have the right to take power into their hands and take him out in order to take his position. And argue. But because he's authorized, by a higher authority, that one will never do that because he understand that the representation of that individual is the entire legion and not just the man. See, when God wants you to get in the position of empowerment and not just take power, he's saying he's giving you the authorization that when you see you, when they see you, they will see him. This is why Christ said, when you see me, 
you've seen the Father. Because you're in the position that now you present the Father. Because the Father has authorized you. So now you're empowered to do what the Father has empowered you to do. Many of us are struggling because we refuse to be authorized by God. Because we want power into our own hands. We want things to be done our own way. And Jesus understood that he understands his position more than everybody who was listening to him, including his disciples. That Jesus responded and said, Verbatim, I tell you the truth, I've not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. That faith is not about the words you say. But faith is a reflection that I commit to God's authority despite the reality of the situation. And anybody who knows me knows that my faith is going to be the anchor that keeps me grounded, going to be the thing that leads my steps no matter what I'm going to face. So if you're coming to charge my faith, then you might want to don't waste your time. Because God has told me and now I'm committed and complying to every word that God says to me. That's how you position yourself in order to be authorized by God. That now when people see you, they see the Father. Christ was powerful because he represented God. He was God in the flesh. Means that he's a representation of a higher authority that's greater in this world. That when demons see him, they have to acknowledge his authority and obey his authority. Christ was powerful, but most importantly, Christ was authorized. God shows you, I know many of us are powerful within our right. My question to you is, are you truly authorized by God? If you want to know how you can be authorized, first you have to be in a position where you want to be empowered by him. So you're allowing to give you the opportunity, provide the information, the right information, you commit and comply to it, to the best of your ability. But what if I fall off? It happens. That means that you get back on track as fast as possible. What if I miss the mark? We all do. The difference is, I miss the mark, but I'm aiming back to get back on the mark as fast as possible. But I'm not perfect, but God knows that you're not perfect, but you're aiming towards perfection as it reflects who, on who Christ is. Because he's given us enough grace to be able to understand that we can be us and not be perfect and still stay in his will if we can commit and comply to his information. That knowledge is more powerful than power. Because knowledge puts you in a position to be empowered by authority that is greater than you. But when you try to hold power by yourself, it results into chaos. Now let's transition to the scripture reading for today. That Christ found the favor of the non-religious man, the Roman general, to be greater than anyone else in Israel. But now Jesus is speaking as he is teaching. The people who are willing to hear from him include his disciples. And he's also talking to us in verse 21. He says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles. Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoer. That is some strong words. Some very strong words. And what Christ is saying in that scripture is he's, he's teaching. He's teaching his people, and I believe he's still teaching today as you're reading the scriptures. Is that he's teaching us that it's not about our deeds, it's about our intention. One. And two, it's not about what we have done, but it's about whose instructions do we follow. Many of us perform things. 
that seem to be godly out of the will of God because we're not listening to God. But what Christ is showing us is that when you come and say, Lord, Lord, it's not about the word and the title that you're proclaiming. It's about what it represents as you're saying it. That when you say, Lord, Lord, it should be a direct reflection of your commitment and compliance to his word. Not just pretending to be like your Christ lap. Not just pretend to do what Christ does. But it's a reflection that you have now committed yourself and complied to his instructions to the best of your ability. And I say the word commitment because sometimes we can commit to actions out of ignorance and miss the mark. But see, once you're committed to following God, you always adjust yourself accordingly to get back to where you're supposed to be. But if you're not committed, then you won't. So God's children, who are you committed to? Yourself? And that is reflected by this, by the way. You're committed to what God can do for you. Because many people think that committed to yourself is just saying, well, I don't care about God. That's not exactly how it looks like when it comes to the Christian walk. In essence, what it looks like, it looks like someone who wants God to be in your life, who acknowledges and respects God, as long as God does what they want God to do, not what God wills them to do with their life. And it's important for us to understand the difference. That we can't be in a position where we're trying to lead God, talking about we're with God. We're with God with the wrong intention. But we have to be people who are willing to let God lead us. Despite the situation, despite your preference, despite your desires, despite what the culture says, despite what your society thinks, despite what your circumstances may be. That Christ values his ability to teach and you understand and comply over everything else. God shows you, I know that God can bless you. I know that God has blessed you. But I want you to know that the teaching of Christ the teaching that God has given you is the most important thing in your life. It is more important than prayer. It is more important than fasting. It is more important than coming to church. It is more important than worshiping. Because the teaching teaches you how to comply and to do those things correctly. This is why the Bible says that it's impossible to please God without faith. But the Bible continues to tell us that faith cometh by hearing, not by speaking, not by desiring, but by hearing. What do you do when you hear? When you listen, right, and you hear something, that means you're being taught. That is impossible to do anything to please God without faith, but the prerequisite for faith is your ability to hear God. That means you're in a position. Here is a reflection that God is teaching you. God is leading you. God is informing you. And how you convert it with complying and committed, that's how your faith is built in belief. So he's saying that everybody that called me Lord, Lord, I'm going to accept. In fact, when it comes down to it, the only people I would acknowledge is the ones that comply and commit to the formation that has given you. Not the ones that perform the most miracles. Not the ones that have the highest praise and worship. Not the ones that drive out demons, but the ones that comply to his teaching. God's children, I know we want to do and be a part of and receive the signs and the wonders, but Christ values his teaching more than those things. He even told us that the devil comes with signs and wonders too. The devil has his own goons that can prophesy. The devil has his own goons that can heal people. The devil has his own goons that can bless you, quote unquote, with things of this world. What the devil cannot imitate and do is be able to teach you the principle of God that you can comply to where you live in love and in the will of God. And that's what he wants, us to, te wants to teach us. That the signs and the wonders are all things that we receive 
But he wants to teach so that we can be empowered. So when we get into the situation, we have the authorization to be able to do it ourselves. So we don't have to run to somebody who have questionable intentions, by the way, in order to receive something from him. He said, I want to empower you. So Christ is teaching them that it's more important to listen and receive the teaching more than anything else. Or else on the last day, I do not know you. That means he wanted to denounce you as an individual, non-existent to him. Now as we continue, let me go to verse 24. And he says, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and put them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had a foundation on the rock. I'll stop there. So he's giving us an insight. He's saying, I know you want all these other things, but what is going to empower you, my children, is my teaching. That my words and the information I'm giving you, not the world giving you, not what's popular is giving you, not what is current today is giving you, not what is trending is giving you, but what I'm giving you, what God is giving you, will be like a man who built his house on a rock. Who's the rock? Christ is the rock. A solid rock. That your foundation will not be able to be shaken. And he didn't say the winds, the rain, won't happen. The flood won't happen to you too. He said it will happen to you because it rains on the just and the unjust. But the difference is the unjust will be torn down, but the just will remain firm. In fact, the world will know that you are a child of God. The world will know that you are authorized. The world will see the power that you possess with the authorization of God. That when trouble comes your way, adversity comes your way, when you have to face giants, that the ability to overcome them will show that there's greater in you than what's in the world. God's children, that is with authorization. Christ is saying the key is my teaching. Stop chasing after people for signs and wonders only. Stop going to church just to praise and worship and not listen to the sermon. Stop listening to random things over listening to the word of God. Because the only thing that can save us, the only thing that can authorize us and empower us and position us for prosperity is the word of God when you're being taught. This is why the saying say you can give a man a fish and you only feed him for a day. Because when you're given something, it only lasts for a short period of time. But if you can teach someone something, it will last the entire lifetime. God is saying to a lot of his children, I'm tired of just giving you stuff. Because this is why you're always in need coming back to me over and over and over again when you're faced with the same problem because you refuse teaching and want to just be given. But I want to teach you to become better so you can stop being bitter out of your lack. And when I start to teach you through my words, you start to realize that you can be empowered by my information. And as you commit and comply, it will start to transform your mind. That influence your perspective. And then your position will start to change. And before you know it, you will start to become another human being. A greater human being. You start to discover who you truly are in the sights of God. You start to be bold in situations that had you fearful. You start to hold your faith in moments that you will be faithless. Because you're taught, and because you're able to be taught, that information can change, transform your mind. And as a man thinketh, so is he. That's why God is focused more on teaching you 
so your mind can be changed, so as you think it, you become it. That's why Christ said, if you don't pay attention to my teaching, I do not know you. I know you call, you say, Lord, Lord, but your Lord is in vain. It, it doesn't have anything behind it. Just like I love you, I love you. That those words are supposed to be a representation of a position that you've committed to and will comply to. That when I say, Lord, Lord, I'm acknowledging your Lord over my life and I've committed and complied to your information. In anything that I face, nothing comes above you. Just like when I say I love you, it means that no matter what emotion, experience, or whatever else is going on, I'm committed that your well-being comes above everything else. Not that my well-being comes above everything else. Because that's not love. So as he continues, he talked about the man who received his teaching that he is a man that built his house on the rock and despite the chaos, despite the storm, it is still standing. One of the things I told you is that how you know you're authorized in the area that you're in is not that you don't face trials and tribulations and oppositions. It's that you're still standing in spite of those things. You're able to overcome them and still stand. You may be weak. You may be exhausted. You may be annoyed. You may be in a position where you say, I had enough, but you're still standing. How you know you're not in that position is when you're unable to overcome anything. That means that you're not getting the right teaching. Don't look for a blessing at that moment. Look to be taught so you can be blessed. Because blessed individuals always overcome, always become prosperous. Despite where they are, what group they're in, what country they're in right now, what time they are in, what situation they're facing. Now let's continue. It says that the rain came down. So let's go down to verse 26. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who builds his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against the house and it fell with a great crash. So it's important, God, children, to realize that he's saying the difference between the house that they both were building is that one built their house on the word of God. The other one neglect the word of God. How are you building your house? Your house is not a representation of your life. And your life is a representation of your decision and your position. So how are you building your house? Is it on the word of God? Or is it on the word of the world? Or on the words of your desire? We really have to think about that. God is saying, I have better for you than you have for yourself. This is why I'm not interested in you using your desires to lead you. Use my will, my teaching, and my instructions to lead you. Because what you want to accomplish is based on man's influence. What I want you to accomplish is based on your design and your purpose. These are all things which are discovered but through the word of God. So be aware, God's children, that that is important. Be completely aware. So be careful how you build your house. So I want to give, I want to say this. I wasn't going to, but I want to say anyways. What I respected about Noah is that Noah built his house or built the ark, I should say, by the word of God. The storms came. When the storm came, the storm, or all storms, and he was able to survive. But you have to understand that what Noah did was stay in the will of God and follow the instructions of God every step of the way. But then when you look at Saul, the first official king of Israel, he followed the will of God but didn't follow the word 
Word of God while he was in the will of God. This is why he followed the will of God to attack the Malachites. But he didn't follow God's instruction in what to do while he attacked the Malachites. Therefore, his authority was taken away. His position was taken away. And his power was taken away. He didn't even know he was under a storm that he failed in. And that was all because of the word of God that he refused to comply to. Some of us commit ourselves to the will of God, but not the word of God while we're in the will of God. So we don't maintain our position. It's an everyday thing. That every day you get up, God says, you want to make sure you're listening keenly to what God is saying you should do in all these situations. Sometimes he would speak to you through scriptures and principles and teaching. Sometimes he would give you a sign. Sometimes he would nudge you a little bit in your spirit. Sometimes you provide information through a friend, through an encounter, through an experience. Sometimes God would just take control of the day and your plans go out the window. And God just decides to interrupt everything and let, it, and let it go away that you didn't expect. However God is leading you, make sure you're in the position every day to say, God, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of your mouth. So God, whatever words you're giving me right now, because I know it's by your teaching, I will be saved. It's by your teaching, I will be empowered. It's by your teaching, I'll be authorized. It's by your teaching, I will overcome. It's by your teaching, I will reach salvation. It's by your teaching, I will become all you made me to be. It's by your teaching, I am forgiven. It's by your teaching, I would have salvation. It's by your teaching, I would have life for eternity. So I'm willing to be taught every day. Every day I'm a student and as I continue to grow and get higher, it's more and more I have to be keen on listening to you to become an even better student. So God shows you, please, it is very important to build your house on the word of God, a.k.a. your life. And your life is a reflection of your decisions and your position. So as we're closing up, God's children, verse 28 says this. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed, was amazed at his teaching. Because he taught as one who had authority and not as your teachers of the law. So there we go again. He taught with authority. God wants you to have authority over your life. But he has to be the one to authorize you. Now we don't want to seek after power. But to be empowered by God. And I recall as I want to say it again. That power in itself. The raw power is assuming the right to take control of. That is forceful. That's what Eve did. She took the initiative to take control by eating that fruit. But God doesn't want us to do that. In essence, God wants us to come back to him and say, listen, God, this is what I'm trying to accomplish. This is what I want to be. This is where I want to go. Is it in your will, God? And if it is, how can you teach me so I can be equipped and develop myself where you can authorize therefore you can empower me in order to do it or get it because empowerment means to give power or authority to and that's what God wants that real power God's children is in submission not domination so let us stop trying to dominate each other dominate situations and submit to the right authority, and that is God's authority. This is when this why that when you do that, then God will know that He can authorize you. Therefore, when you step into any situation, you're not a representation of yourself, as frail as you may be. You're now a representation of the God of the universe, where demons have to tremble in your presence because of your authority. Your circumstances have to obey your commands because of your authority. Your situation has to commit to comply to your instructions because of your authority that God has given you. 
This is why God found the centurion to be more faithful than all the people that he was teaching. Was because he recognized that the centurion recognized that he has authority over all situations. And he exercised his knowledge before he was even taught because he just knew it. I say, Christ, you don't have to come to my house. If you say the word, because I know your authorization, I know that it would happen. Reflection of his belief based on his understanding. God's children, if you want to increase your belief, which will increase your faith, you really have to increase your understanding. That means you got to continue to seek God for more and more and more and more information. And as he equips you with information and give you the ability to understand as you commit and comply, before you know it, you'll be in the position where you can declare that yes, you are more than the conqueror that God says you are. If this video In was inspiring, you insightful, or even left you a little curious for more information, please comment down below. We would love to hear from you. And if you also enjoy this post, I'd be very grateful if you help it to spread by emailing it to a friend or sharing it on Facebook or any other social media outlet. Thank you, and I will see you next time.